Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. What brings our brothers to this day is that they have listened to the word the Lord has spoken to them. And they have heard the Lord calling each of them by name. And each of them has sought to respond to the call of the Lord by leaving all things behind and following him. When I think of the Dominican life, I think of one of the key phrases that's been used to describe St. Dominic, and that's that he spoke only to God or about God. That theocentric, that God-centered focus that Dominic incarnated. And so the way Dominic lived, which in a sense was only to God, for God or about God, preaching, that, that theocentric, that God-centered focus is to me very distinctive. It's important to consider the generosity that God has given to you in your life. Each of us have received so much and what shall I render to the Lord for all that he's given to me? We have to give back to the Lord and, and if the Lord is calling you to discern that vocation, and to, to respond to the grace that God has given to you. Because God's grace works through our human nature. So the more that God's, God's, God's grace works in our lives, the more we have this ability to, to be more fully human. Beyond everything that the world has to give, beyond everything that even we ourselves have to offer, um, God is at work. And it's His grace, His truth, His love that makes it all matter and makes it worth it. These features, the, the the presence, the, the intercession of Our Lady through the prayer of the Rosary and the guidance of uh, our brother St. Thomas Aquinas helps these young men who are coming to the order to answer the call that the Lord is, is issuing to them to follow in the footsteps of St. Dominic as he himself followed in the footsteps of our Lord Jesus. And as long as there are people on the face of this earth, there will be a need to preach the gospel. One should, of course, have a great desire to share one's faith, to show one's faith in the truth, a great desire to learn that truth, to study the truth, to uh, pray in that truth and become so immersed in it that one desires quite naturally to, to share it. And one is, is quite literally bursting forth with that truth. If we can uh, hold up the truth and describe it, witness to it, and that truth is ultimately Jesus Christ, then everybody will see that and they'll be drawn to it themselves. And so a necessary part of being a Dominican is not simply going out and telling people what it is they have to believe. Most people, I think, know right from wrong. They know good from evil. As Dominicans, what we do is dedicate our life to prayer, study, and the fruits of that prayer and study in our preaching. But we don't do it in a solitary fashion. We, we do it in, in a community. We, we live a common life. And, and from that common life comes also, not just our preaching, but the prayer and the study as well. 
um, for the order uh, throughout the almost eight centuries of our existence, we've gone back time and time again to simply reminding ourselves of what St. Dominic uh, wanted us to be. A, a band of preachers, intelligent men, convicted in the faith, but who lived a common life so that we can go out into the world and bring what we first experience in our community um, to the world, to those who hear us. And if there is any characteristic of Dominican preaching, I, I think it's a lot, it has to be described along those lines. Not, not simply truth, and not simply love either, because sometimes those words can just be bantered about and, and they lose their meaning. I, I think more importantly, the notion of joy, and, and that is the hallmark of Dominican preaching. Truth, love, but, but the joy that unites those two. A lot of people have lived in the world, have seen the, what the modern world has to offer, um, and they've seen it and, and largely reject it, find it not to be fulfilling, uh, not to be where uh, they are called to be. Um, and so they want a, um, a deeper encounter with God. And I think that's what the first call is, is that, that call to religious life in which you kind of give yourself radically over to something that is beyond you, um, something that is greater than you. And something that the world simply cannot offer, um, and that is that uh, fundamental relationship with God. In two generations, our culture has modified itself in radically unexpected ways. And yet the truth of Christ is the same. And the call of the cross is the same. And the grace of God is the same. Because no matter how societies may turn themselves over and cultures erupt in all kinds of bizarre behaviors, God is faithful. And so his truth is the same. And the offer of salvation from all the madness that our sins create socially, all the damage that our errors inflict upon us, culturally, can still be remedied and corrected through faithful preaching the gospel of Christ. And I think that these men are coming in and remind us who are already priests of the great vocation that we're called to, that the bar has to be really high because it's a bar set by God and that we can't do it by ourselves. I mean, we've got to do it first because we trust in God, and that we do it not because of the expectations that the world gives us, but because we're convinced that we were born for this. For any young man that's considering a vocation to the Dominicans, come talk to us and to consider the possibilities of what God could be doing in your life.